Welcome to the Movie Geeks United Sundance Film Festival Spotlight on The Perfect Host. David Hype Pierce is a beloved actor, particularly for his unforgettable performance in the television classic Frasier. But his new role in the independent film The Perfect Host turns the image of Niles Crane completely on its head. This is one of the most buzzed-about films at this year's Sundance Film Festival, and it screens Sunday, January 24th, Wednesday, January 27th, Friday, January 29th, and Saturday, January 30th. In this interview, Mr. Pierce discusses the Sundance Fest, during which he's also performing hosting duties at the Weekending Awards Ceremony, and his exciting new role in this twisted thriller. This is an interesting project uh, for you, and I read a recent Vanity Fair interview, the headline of which was, David Hyde Pierce doesn't want you to know what his new movie is about. Uh, <laughs> so that's always tricky. I mean, you want to get the word out about the film, and yet the film holds so many surprises, you want it to be new for people when they see it. That's exactly where we find ourselves with this. Unfortunately, I mean, the producers took a sort of tricky strategy, which is they really didn't let out screeners of this. Um, I think it started letting people seeing it today because we premiere tonight. And uh, but but it sort of paid off. I'm mean, here at Sundance now, and there seems to be a pretty good buzz about the movie. But it is it's hard because it is the kind of movie that it's got a lot of twists and turns and surprise things happening. And you just don't want to give that stuff away because that's the fun yeah. of watching it. Well, I would think that obviously you've done so much work on on, on film, on TV, on the stage, and varied performances. But I would think the pervasive perception of you is probably more than likely Frasier. Uh, and that was a very specific kind of character. And this movie, it turns that on its head in a way. Was that a big drawing point for you to this project? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it was the biggest drawing point, but it certainly factored into wanting to do it. Uh, for, above all, it was, it's a great character uh, and a really cool script. And uh, so that was the first thing that drew it to me. As I thought about it, I realized that uh, we're sort of... We're, I think one of the reasons I'm a good choice for the part is that it's good to have someone um, who's known in the way I'm known, known more for Frasier, mainly, as you said, that's the thing most people know me from, Um, because you think, okay, I know who this is, I know kind of what this will be like. So then it's more of a surprise when uh, it goes to sort of darker places. If it was Russell Crowe or Kevin Spacey, you, you wouldn't be surprised at all. Tell me about the the shooting of this, uh, because I'm interested in, uh, as an independent film, how does that uh, translate into a a different experience for you as an actor? Yeah, there's very specific ways. Uh, It's it's much faster. There's much less downtime for the actor. Um, Really, always, all it's all things that are good from my perspective. a lot of the, the aspects of filmmaking that didn't appeal to me was that sitting around forever while they relight and, um, you know, the endless months being away from uh, from home. This this actually, the location that I mainly shot in was two blocks from my house in Los Angeles. Mm. And there was, uh, um, like I said, and also a, gr- a great thing that is not necessarily a hallmark of independent film, but Nick, our director, uh, Nick Tomney, um, we got to rehearse. Uh, for several days, me and Clayne Crawford, who plays the other leading role, and that was uh, um, really uh, valuable time. Uh, as Nick will tell you, ironically, what made it valuable is it was easier for us to be spontaneous because we had done that work ahead of time. You know, yeah. we sort of found the arc of the movie in rehearsal, so that then, really, no matter where we were, we could sort of go with it and uh, and stay stay sort of attached to the to the to the arc of the film. So give me a sense of when you when you get the script, the work you do on it on your own, and then how that matures and kind of blossoms when you're actually in the in the physical process of of doing it. Yeah, it's um, there's a a lot of the, in this one a lot of the the work the pre production work mainly with learning lines. I had been uh, advised by friends who've done a lot of independent film. They said, look, you can't do this like a regular movie where you sort of prepare each day ahead of time because they do too much. They shoot too much. You won't have time to learn stuff the night before. So that was part of it is uh, um, just simply getting all the, the, the whole script in my head. Um, there were specific character things that I had to work on um, that uh, I probably won't talk about right now because they're sort of <laughs> part of the surprise of the movie. But right. uh, um, uh that, and then what happens 
in the moment uh, is really the stuff that gets brought out of you by the other actor. Uh, other actors. I was really lucky with this cast because um, that that's true for film or stage or anything. That your you, your best work comes when you're really connected to the other performers. Um, and they're connected to you, and then you do stuff that you can't plan, and that's really wonderful. Let me ask you about the festival itself. You say okay. that there seems to be a buzz about the film. How does that manifest itself? How can you sense that? Um, it's just, you know, people talking about it on the street, or uh, when, when someone says to you, so, uh, like, oh, what's your movie? I, oh, I'm in The Perfect Host. And they go, oh, yeah, I've heard about that. The other way there's buzz is uh, not specifically the movie itself, but... We're part of this uh, uh, the festival. It's called Park City at Midnight, and mm-hmm. it's a very uh, unique branch of the festival, which is sort of wild, dark, creepy movies that crazy people go to watch at midnight. And uh, so, uh, when when people find out that you're part of that uh, that part of the festival, even if they haven't heard specifically about the movie, they get excited because they think, "Oh, we kind of know that this will be a fun ride, whatever it is." Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to ask about because it premieres later tonight uh, at midnight, 11.59 p.m., according to the schedule. Uh, So that fits in with the personality of the film, that time, for you. Well, and also we're – I don't know if you've spent a lot of time at Sundance, but we're premiering at the Egyptian Theater, which is a great old movie house. And there's something very gothic. uh, Nick, our director, uh, described it recently, the movie is sort of a, a gothic David Hockney painting. Because Hockney did all these really, you know, brightly colored L.A. type poolside paintings, but this has this kind of mossy overgrowth, and uh, I think this theater is perfect for that. So, uh, have, cool. have you attended uh, Sundance in the past? I was here about eight years ago for Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah, this is uh, a great comedy that I got to be in, and uh, I love it here. It's real, and I'm I'm seeing other stuff. I saw The Company of Men. Last night, which is a John Wells film uh, that's great. Uh, mm. Looking forward to seeing other things uh, as my schedule loosens up later in the week. I'm here for the week because I'm hosting the awards at the end, so right. I get time in the middle to uh, uh, see as much as I can of the other stuff that's playing. There's been a lot of press about their efforts to kind of revitalize, reinvigorate uh, the festival. Uh, but what is the personality of Sundance for you? Uh, what do you, because it seems like a, a very a very tight knit uh, film loving community. Do you still get that sense from that festival? Totally. I mean, the people walking up and down the street, uh, half of them actually have cameras in their hands because they're either I don't know what they're doing. They're either finishing their movies before it screens, or shooting documentaries, or documenting their own being the fact that they're being at Sundance. Uh, the excitement. Uh, I, I think what's cool about Sundance is it's now. Um, literally but also figuratively, an institution. Um, and that can breed uh, bureaucracy. It, become, it can become part of the establishment that it sort of grew up in, in rebellion against. And that really hasn't happened here. And I, I feel that very strongly this year especially. I think because of the economics of the film world, um, a lot of the excess and uh, extravagance that's grown up around the art of making film has been blown away. And what's left standing is the core of what Sundance is already always about, which is people who have an independent view, people who have a look at things differently, who show us things that maybe we've seen before but never thought about in this way. Uh, and I think coincidentally, I think the country is kind of ripe for that. We're all sort of disillusioned with most of our major institutions and sort of uh, the, the, the banking system, the political system, and all of that. And uh, the time is right for people who step outside the mainstream and look in and sort of hold the mirror up to us. When you get scripts for independent projects, uh, do they tend to uh, excite you the most because they're more outside of the box somehow? They can be. Um, it is as it is as possible to make a crappy independent film as it is to make a crappy big studio film. So right. I don't think you know that, uh, and and the reverse is true too. Um, so, uh, but certainly that's an appeal, and it's also an appeal like doing a movie like this. It's an appeal for me because aside from getting away from the specific character that I played, say on television for all those years, it also gets me away from the the. 
um, that kind of mainstream image. And I have no complaints about that. I loved doing my show, and I, I think it was on at a time when, when television comedy was really quite respected and, and deserved to be. But uh, it's nice for me to be able to step away from um, – even step away from Broadway for a little while, step away from television for a little while, and be uh, in this in this other atmosphere. It, it seems like with this role, there's there's a sense of, um, uh, and you're speaking to it, a sense of, of freedom. Did, did you feel yeah. that doing it? Oh, totally, totally. And that's really, uh, it's because the part allows you to do that. Um, and also because Nick, uh, who's uh, I'm so amazed with him because he's you know, basically a first-time director. He uh, certainly is a feature of this size. Mm-hmm. And with all the pressures of low budget and crunch for time and everything else, uh, he maintained not only a great atmosphere on the set, allowing us to feel safe, allowing me and Clay to feel like we could really go anywhere and go to places that these characters needed to go, but also with a sense of complete control that he really knew what he wanted. He was open to stuff, but he had such a, you know, he's lived with this movie for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been developing since he did a short that this is based on 10 years ago. And so he knows the characters inside out. So he both gave us total freedom and a real um, guideline. And that's, which is the ultimate freedom in this kind of schedule. I would think that that would be a tricky, uh, a tricky balance to reach because, as you say, he 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 needs to establish himself as as being in complete control of the environment, and yet allow you the freedom to uh, imagine and explore. What what kind of conversations would you have on the set, the director and actor conversations? Uh, I think that most of them were the conversations that people who, even though we really were meeting on this movie. The conversations that people who know each other very well have, which are very uh, shorthand mm-hmm. types of things, uh, I think um, I, he just ha- is instinctively a good director. I don't think uh, I know he he'll tell you he he did a lot of reading of how you talk to actors and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think none of that ultimately matters because he is able to be really in the moment and without being arrogant has a real confidence. Um, so that he didn't have to prove himself the leader. He didn't have to. He just sort of was. And yeah. uh, um, uh, and he had, you know, in claim and in me, he had two performers who have strong opinions and ideas about how things are done and was able to um, accommodate us, accommodate our different working styles. We worked with Klain and I are very different kinds of actors, which played beautifully for the two parts that we were given. Um, mm-hmm. And... Uh, um, and that that whole rehearsal period really allowed us to, the three of us, to uh, merge into one cohesive working unit so that by the time we hit the set, uh, those conversations you referred to could be pretty brief. And, uh, and you know, if he told me more, I've done, that was cool. And if he said that's too much, I got it. It was, it was not much more than that and, uh, and just cruising through. Well, too, he's he's the writer of it as well. So, mm-hmm. as a writer director, you know that he knows the material better than anyone. I mean, he's he's the go-to guy without question. Uh, yeah, but I've also been in the experience where uh, it can be a disadvantage to have the writer directing because you like to have sometimes uh, that extra set of eyeballs. Uh, mm-hmm. There there are cases where a writer just can't see beyond what they've written. Uh, and Nick was not that way. He really was able to um, uh, make changes because of either circumstances on the shoot or um, things that came out in performance. Uh, that uh, I mean, He was just saying to me that there, in seeing this finished film, there are levels that even he didn't know mm-hmm. were going to be part of the film. Uh, um, and that's, that's what happens when you get a bunch of creative people sort of functioning... Uh, 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 with all pistons uh, going and, and allowed to do their best work. Yeah, I'm curious about y- you. You having done this for for many many years, um, has the what you enjoy about it has that changed your appreciation of it or your reasons for doing it over the years? 
Yeah, I always, uh, really until this film, I would, when people ask me about, oh, what do you prefer, theater or film or TV, I'd always say theater first. And mm-hmm. movies I'd always put last because uh, all that stuff I was saying before about sitting around and waiting and also as an actor losing control, having no matter what you do, it ends up being in the hands of the director, in the hands of the editor. Um, that bizarre concept that even though you have a scene with another human being, in fact, they're only shooting your side of the scene for 17 hours, and then two days later they're going to shoot that person's side of the scene, and then someone else is going to put them together. That, you know, just personally, uh, as an actor, is, is was always creepy to me. I liked being on stage. I liked being, having, or even in front of a live audience on TV, having the, the artistic control be right there in my hands and with me and the other actors. But this movie really, I, maybe it was the nature of the part, how much different kind of stuff I got to do in the part, the nature of the collaboration. Uh, I really got to see why actors I respect so much really enjoy making movies because in the right circumstances it can be um, creative in a very different way. And you can, uh, uh, I think the, in any circumstance, whether you're on stage or in, in film or whatever, the most wonderful things are when you are surprised by yourself. It isn't something you plan. It isn't a choice you made. Something happens that's just right, and it's kind of beyond you. Those are great moments. And this is a this is a movie where I was able to have that experience, um, which made it very exciting. I, I can I can imagine that when you do stage, uh, before you go on, no matter how many years you've done it, there's probably a, a level of, of of nerves that that overtake you. Um, but when you're premiering a film as you are tonight, how does that feel? Are you? How is that anticipation? Are you nervous at all? Anxious? Um, when I'm doing theater now, uh, I don't get nervous. I get you don't? excited. No, I don't. I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, and I just look forward to doing it and look forward to. Uh, uh, um, I had a great experience. I got to do a two-person play with Uta Hagen. Uta Hagen was one of the great. American oh. actresses and also one of the great American acting teachers. Right. And there was something about that experience of doing the play with her that kind of either officially confirmed or broke open something in me about uh, a play being just, you walk in the door and then it just starts happening. So it's, there's nothing to be nervous about because you've done your work and you just go out and two hours later or whatever, it's done and you've had this adventure with the other people on stage. And I love that. Having yeah. said that, I am so nervous about tonight because, again, I have no control. It's done. And even though I've seen a rough version of it, I'm, I'll tell you that I'm excited about tonight because I'm going to get to see it on a big screen. I'm going to get to see the finished print, the final mix. I'm going to get to hear the music, which Nick is very excited about. He found a wonderful composer for the movie, and I've heard none of that. So I'm excited about that. But the idea of sitting with people seeing it for the first time and all of us finding out together how much it works, that is very uh, that's very nervous making. Yeah. Well, when you watch a film that you're in, can can you ever lose yourself in the film? Can you separate your experience of making it from actually watching the finished project? Uh, I think it takes a few. Well, probably never totally. But I know even with uh, with being on Fraser or whatever, seeing myself seeing the, the thing for the first time, uh, I usually need to see it a second time to actually take in the whole thing and, and be able to have a sense of how it is. Uh, so in that way, I kind of prepped for tonight because I have seen a rough cut, uh, and uh, I know generally that I'm extremely happy with what I saw. Um, so I, I, in terms of my own feelings about it, I know I'm only going to be happier tonight because of all the extras that I haven't gotten to see that's going to you know make it really pop. But I just don't know, you know when you're part of something like this. It's... It, it's a whole different event. I, last night, being at the screening with John Wells, uh, John Wells has got a lot of experience under his belt, but he announced his film and said, you know, we don't know if this works. They've seen it. Uh, about 200 people, they said, had seen it. But until you put it in front of an audience of people, that's, that's when you find out. It really is like giving birth, because you, the experience of putting it together, you are in a bubble in a kind of way, and, and the, the final birthing process is is presenting it to an audience. Do they become... Uh, does it become alive in a kind of way when it's in front of an audience that that's that makes it feel new, like a new film? Yeah, it does, and that's really weird because I understand that's totally on stage. We always say the the 
the audience is like the third leg of the stool when you're when you're doing the play that you you do your last rehearsal and when you put it into the first audience first preview um things happen on stage that you didn't plan because some instinct in all the actors is is reinforced by the audience and there's a big aha moment uh that happens throughout the course of the evening and sort of in just in the in the air in between the stage and the and the seats something happens that makes the thing come together and it happened. I don't know how it can happen in a movie because the movie's done. There's nobody up there paying attention to the audience. It's a finished thing, but it it um, somehow reveals itself uh, yeah. in a different way when you have those people, when you experience it with all these other people. Now, what's next for you? Are you are you going to go back to the stage soon or another another project? I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to. I'm uh, uh, I'm there's a play that I'm hoping to do in London and. Uh, we're waiting to see about some casting issues, but uh, that would be my next project, um, mm. uh, which would be a theater thing, and then uh, if that works out, then we might bring it to New York afterwards. Uh, if that doesn't work out, I don't know. I'm just going to uh, maybe stay here and go skiing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. You'll find plenty of work <laughs> out there. There's no problem. I wish you the best of luck with uh, the screening tonight. I'm crazy about thank what you, you. do. I, I thank you so much for giving your time today to me. Sure. Pleasure talking to you.